This video is Introduction to Fourier Analysis. It is the first video in an 18 video series where we're going to talk about a variety of topics related to Fourier analysis of discrete time signals. This first video basically just introduces kind of the broad topics that we'll be covering and gives some motivation for why this is an interesting topic to discuss. Then in the later uh, videos, we'll actually get into the details of talking about the discrete time Fourier series, actually deriving the relationship for how you compute those discrete time Fourier series coefficients as a function of the signal that you're working with. And we'll work on a lot of examples as usual. Then we'll move on to talking about the discrete time Fourier transform. Again, we'll come up with uh, you know, the nice theory and derive the equation, the relationship for what the discrete time Fourier transform is in relation to the discrete time signal. Work a lot of examples on coming up with the discrete time Fourier transform of a signal. And then get into the properties of the DTFT that will look very similar to the properties of the Fourier transform if you've studied the continuous time counterpart to the DTFT, which is just the Fourier transform. And then we'll uh, wrap up this uh, video series looking at the frequency response of the system. What we'll learn um, in that video, you know, later on in the playlist is that the frequency response of the system is the discrete time Fourier transform of the system impulse response. And by looking at the frequency response of the system, we can, you know, simplify the input output relationship. We don't have to do convolution. We can instead do multiplication. And also the frequency response function tells us a lot of information about the system since it essentially lets us look at the system in the frequency domain. So there's different characteristics we can more easily see in the frequency domain sometimes. Just as a way of introducing and kind of segueing from what we've been talking about, everything we've been talking about in the last chapter of this course was time domain quantities. So in the last chapter, we came up with a clever way of writing any arbitrary discrete time signal as a linear combination of time shifted and weighted impulses. So this bullet right here, you know, reminds us that we found a way of writing signals as a weighted superposition of delayed impulses. So there's a video on that on the previous playlist. That representation was very nice because when we were able to write the discrete time signal in that way, we were actually able to derive an input-output relationship for the system in the time domain. If you recall, when writing the input signal in this manner, we were able to derive an equation that showed that the output also had that exact same form. So the output of our discrete time system was also a weighted superposition of delayed impulses. And we actually came up with an equation that related the input and output, and that input-output relationship was given by our convolution summation equation. So the last chapter, kind of our strategy was come up with kind of a clever way of writing inputs. It turned out that the output had that exact same form, and we came up with a very nice equation that tied input and output uh, quantities together. Previously, that was convolution. All right, what are we going to do in this chapter? If you say it just in kind of words, the strategy is the, exactly the same. We're gonna come up with an interesting way of expressing signals, and we're gonna use that way to write down the input signal. It's gonna turn out that the output signal is also gonna have that exact same form, and then we're gonna come up with an equation that relates the input and output quantities. So we're gonna come up with a new input-output relationship. So in words, the strategy is very much the same. Let's talk specifically now um, what, what that input relationship is and what that input form is. In this chapter, what we're going to do is we're going to find a way of writing discrete time signals as a weighted superposition. So it's still a weighted superposition, but this time it's going to be of complex sinusoids. In other words, complex exponentials, e to the j omega k. So we're going to find a way of writing x of k equals a, you know, a function of a whole bunch of weighted complex exponentials. That's nice because if you remember, complex exponentials are eigenfunctions of linear systems. So if I put in an e to the j omega k, guess what comes out? e to the j omega k. So not too surprisingly, if my input has the form of a weighted superposition of complex exponentials, my output also has the form of a weighted superposition of complex exponentials. 
So that's kind of nice. So the input output form are going to be exactly the same, just um, different form in terms of supervision of complex exponentials. And then we're going to come up with a new input output relationship. Previously, it was convolution. In this chapter, when we work in the frequency domain, the input output relationship is much simpler, and it's just going to be multiplication. So I'm going to be able to figure out the output signal in the frequency domain just by doing some multiplication. So that's where we're going. Not there yet, but just kind of giving you an outline of what this chapter is all about. Another nice uh, reason we like this complex exponential representation, besides the fact that it really simplifies things, is that if we can find a way of writing a discrete time signal as a weighted superposition of complex exponentials, we can just look at the complex exponentials and tell what frequency they are, so we can immediately understand the frequency content of a signal. So that's very nice. In general, when you do this type of decomposition of writing a signal as a sum of sinusoids or a sum of complex exponentials, the word that we use for that type of analysis is called Fourier analysis. In previous continuous time signals in systems class, you've come across this, right? Previously, if we had a periodic continuous time signal, we did Fourier analysis with a transformation that we called the Fourier series. So we always use the Fourier series, which I abbreviate with FS, to do Fourier analysis on periodic continuous time signals. We're going to learn kind of its counterpart here for discrete time signals, and guess what we call it? We call it the discrete time Fourier series. So previously you had the Fourier series, now we have the discrete time Fourier series. And not too surprisingly, we're going to use this only for periodic discrete time signals. So the DTFS is uh, something we're going to study in depth in the subsequent videos. Similarly, if you've taken a uh, course on continuous time signals and systems before, you got familiar with the FT, the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform was used typically for non-periodic continuous time signals. Guess what we're going to learn in this class, in this playlist? We're going to learn about the DTFT, the discrete time Fourier transform. The discrete time Fourier transform is for non-periodic discrete time signals. So the things that you're familiar with, the FS and the FT, we're going to expand in this playlist, in this video series, to learn about the DTFS, the discrete time Fourier series, and the DTFT, the discrete time Fourier transform. All right, that's it for now. In the uh, next video, we'll actually uh, kind of dive into things and get started looking at the discrete time Fourier series. Thanks for watching.